There's people that have trouble falling asleep. There's people that have trouble staying asleep. There's people that have trouble getting restful sleep. And then there's people that wake up in the middle of the night for whatever reason. Maybe they have to pee. Maybe they have a thought. Maybe they have a bad dream. But they consistently wake up and then they have a hard time falling back asleep. That's me. And it's actually a fair bit of people that I talk to. But it's not fair to rope sleep issues into one category. That's like saying I have metabolic issues or I have health issues. There's all kinds of categories, right? So the waking up and then not falling back asleep, a lot of times for people is a racing mind. It is somewhat anxiety induced. Even if you don't feel like you have anxiety during the day, it's like the thoughts kind of rush into your head at night. It's hard to fall back asleep. So there's a compound that they've been looking at. And I'll just come right out and tell you what it is. It's saffron. But I want to explain the mechanisms and how it works because this is really, really interesting stuff and it helps you learn the proper dosing, the strategy and why it's doing what it's doing so you know when to take it. So first there was a study that was published in Nutrients. It was a randomized control trial. Really fascinating study. Again, good quality RCT. So it was looking at sleep as associated with anxiety. What they did is they gave subjects a low dose, very low dose of saffron, 15 and a half milligrams, and they had them do this for six weeks compared to a placebo. Oh, and then they measured their sleep with uh, actigraphy. So they actually looked at their sleep waves, they actually looked legitimate at their sleep, plus a questionnaire. Okay, after six weeks, total time in bed increased, total wakefulness during the day increased, total sleep quality increased and sleep latency decreased. They fell asleep faster and the placebo group had no effect whatsoever. Now, what's interesting is that there's actually more. It, it's kind of funny because we typically look at melatonin as like the ultimate sleep aid. I personally have issues with melatonin. I am groggy the next day. I don't care what people say, I develop a dependency on it. As early as like two to three days after taking melatonin, the next time I don't take it, I don't sleep well for multiple days. So if I take it when I travel, which I know is almost necessary to get on a pattern, I still feel like I need it. And the evidence is split. Okay, melatonin is safe, there's no denying that. But a sleep dependency is a problem. So anyway, I digress. But there's a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So RCTs, good, randomized control, crossover design trials, and a meta-analysis looking at multiple of them. And here's what they found. Across the board, saffron-induced improved sleep across three different huge measures. So the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, which is one of the leading sleep tests, the Insomni Severity Index, and the Restorative Sleep Questionnaire. These are three of like really the seven that I know of that are really top sleep like subjective questionnaires. Now they're still questionnaires, but subjective questionnaires still matter. Like if someone says they're sleeping better compared to placebo and you're looking at a meta-analysis of RCTs, there's probably something there. So then we have to look at the anxiety side here though, because even if you don't feel like there's an anxiety issue during the day, what can happen is when certain brainwave changes occur or when you're just finally dormant in your thoughts, you're dormant, you're sleeping, you wake up, then it's not necessarily the anxiety that gets you, but it's your response to the anxiety, right? Maybe something hits you and you get this big surge of adrenaline and you're like, shoot, now I can't fall back asleep. So there was a study that was published in Complementary Therapies and Medicine that was really interesting because it looks specifically at anxiety and its effect on sleep specifically as a comorbidity when it came down to T2D, type 2 diabetes. Now with T2D, it's not uncommon to have anxiety as a comorbidity and a sense of restlessness. The sleep quality in a type 2 diabetic, insulin resistance goes down quite a bit. So in this case, they gave these subjects a good dose, 30 grams per day of saffron. What they found is that not only did it improve depression and anxiety, but it improved their sleep as it pertained to their depression and anxiety. So they would wake up and they'd be able to fall back asleep and they wouldn't have that sense of restlessness. Now, additionally, they also found that it sort of got rid of that unsettling feeling that metabolic issues can cause. Like it's, it's weird, it's almost like a restless leg, restless arm, I feel like I have to do something. Uh, I wake up alert and I wake up like ready to fight. That's a real common thing with metabolic issues. Sometimes it has to do with mitochondrial function, it has to do with inflammation and neuroinflammation, a lot of different potential root causes. I wanna jump over really quick and I wanna talk about mechanism here because this can help us. If we understand how saffron is working, it can help us. So the first potential thought, and again, a lot of this still needs to be flushed out. The first potential thought is that 
melatonin levels increase when subjects take in uh, saffron. So it seems to naturally increase melatonin. But saffron seems to have an impact on the gut microbiome, which may indirectly, therefore, increase the conversion of tryptophan into serotonin, ultimately melatonin, right? So you need to have this conversion process happen to increase serotonin and melatonin. So it's possibly affecting the gut, which means that when you take it an hour before bed, you're having a gut reaction that is causing you to produce more feel-good hormone, neurotransmitter, and also helping you ultimately sleep. But the other part that's really, really, really interesting there's this thing called the NMDA receptor, not MDMA receptor, NMDA receptor. And it sits on the neuron, okay? And what it does is it accepts calcium and it allows this calcium to come in and calcium is what's called excitatory. So it, it excites the cell, it excites you. This happens in the brain and it gets you like, oh, okay, I'm excited. The NMDA receptor acts as like the, the doorkeeper. Okay, saffron seems to bind to the NMDA receptor and actually stops the doorman from really letting calcium do its thing. So it actually prevents this excitatory response. Now magnesium does a really similar thing, but not to as significant of a degree. That's why we hear that calcium and magnesium somewhat oppose each other because they do sort of oppose each other in that sort of inhibitory sense of excitatory neurotransmission. So this is super fascinating and more needs to be flushed out with this. You can just pop saffron. You absolutely could just take saffron and get like a low dose saffron that way. I popped a link to a company that I know of that I've actually helped them formulate with some of this stuff and I've helped them talk to them about this stuff, which is why I know about it. Uh, a company called Verso, they have a product called Evening Being. It's really the first sleep product I've seen that is using saffron. They're using a, like a clinical 28 milligram dose, which is like, I'll talk about in some other literature, like 28 milligrams seems to be a really good dose. But they also combine that with theanine, which is very, very good for sleep because it helps kind of cool the body, it helps cool, bring coolness down to the core, and that's gonna end up basically triggering this melatonin response within the body as well. It also has three grams of glycine in it, so not a crazy amount of glycine, but enough to sort of induce sleep and also have that cooling effect and vasoconstriction in the right places. Finally, it has one gram of magnesium of three and eight, and three and eight can cross through the blood-brain barrier and has more of an impact directly on the brain, so it has that calming effect. So obviously the core effect is saffron, and that's what I want you to take away from this. And again, like, you don't need to get this product. I don't want to get the wrong impression across, but the combination of these ingredients with Verso is really, really well put together. I went ahead, I put a link down below. That's also a special discount link if you do want to try them out. And a big thank you to them for allowing me to mention them in this video to make it worthwhile for everybody. You get something out of it and it allows me to actually have something to talk about that's pragmatic. So that link is down below in the top line of the description. There's another mechanism that's really interesting and this has only been flushed out in rodent models. But again, this is all super early. That's the benefit of kind of how I roll with my channels. I try to bring things out early. I don't always say, hey, this is 100% gonna work in humans. We see this stuff in rodents. Try to be honest with that. But, so some of this early model research is showing that Saffron has the ability to inhibit neurons that promote wakefulness during the evening. Okay, there's a really cool thing that comes with saffron that I'm gonna talk about in a second. So basically it's making it so that you're not having these neurons kind of that are excitatory in the middle of the night. But it seems to promote the neurons that induce sleep. So it's almost like a selective neural inhibition activation process. How it's working, that's gonna take a while to figure out. Very, very interesting. Okay, now here's the biggest problem that I have with melatonin. Melatonin, I feel like dog crap the next day for hours in the morning. If I were to come in here and try to film, I wouldn't even remember what I'm trying to say. Like it's, it affects me that much and I'm not the only one that deals with that. And forget it, like sleeping pills, anything else, no way. I will say tart cherry juice is awesome. Like tart cherry juice, above all, is a really good option too. Like it definitely has an impact on increasing melatonin in the body. It has natural melatonin in it. So that is one of the other few things I've found to work really well for me. But what's interesting about saffron is there was another RCT, randomized control trial, published in Sleep Medicine. This was probably my favorite one because it talks about how you feel the next day. So they gave a specific dose for 28 days. They gave subjects 14 milligrams saffron, 28 milligrams saffron, or a placebo. 
they found ultimately better sleep overall, better sleep onset, better sleep scores, better REM sleep, naturally higher melatonin levels in a dose dependent fashion with more saffron, the 28 milligram dose did better. But what was even better is it increased their morning mood. It made them feel better in the morning. It actually increased their mood throughout a lot of the day. Now, waking mood is everything, okay? That is a signal for a lot of dopaminergic effects and negative attributes, right? People that a lot of times wake up in a really bad mood, their dopamine pool is a lot of times depleted. And then they need coffee or they need whatever to get their dopamine up a little bit to even feel normal. But until they have that, they almost don't feel human. Now, there are people that are naturally like that, and there are people that have depleted their dopamine stores and ultimately end up like that. People that maybe doom scroll too much on their phone and they deplete dopamine. People that do recreational drugs and deplete dopamine. Their baseline is so much like, it's like their baseline is higher for their needs for dopamine, but their overall static baseline in mood is lower. It's because they are naturally just at a lower dopamine level. They need caffeine or something to lift them just to get to normal level. And then they probably decline a little bit throughout the course of the day, unless they're giving themselves some kind of dopamine hit constantly, like scrolling or something. This sounds like woo woo made up stuff, but it's super real. So perhaps what's happening with saffron is you're improving that dopamine pool, probably because you're getting restful sleep. So you're waking up in a mode where you're like, hey, I'm ready to take on the day. Perhaps I don't need as much coffee, but I like coffee and I don't wanna give up my coffee, but at least I'm waking up in a good mood. I have experimented with saffron off and on, and for a long time I wasn't taking enough. I would try a five milligram dose because I thought that was what I should take. I didn't realize that the literature really supports 20 to 100 milligrams. That's where it seems to be, and it seems to be like you really need to take it one to two hours before bed. It's not something that builds up in your system, but that is good because we don't want something that builds up in the system. We want something with a short half-life that we can control. But what's interesting is that I've gotten to a point where I don't need saffron all the time. I know when I'm a little bit more on edge and the two things that I'll do, two different compounds, two different types of supplements, I'll use saffron slash like evening being, that's a great category. I also respond really, really well to kava. Now, kava is a whole different world, but if you are someone that responds well to kava lactones and things like that, because of its effect on GABA, that is a really powerful tool as well. Two different kinds of categories in a way, but they're still sort of working on that anxiousness that can hit you at night. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.